There's a couple different ways to use them. A lot of traders use them to try and trade in between, buy when it hits the lower band, sell when it hits the higher band. Uh, that's one way to use them. Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Jonathan Corpina on the line. He is Senior Managing Partner at Meridian Equity Partners. He manages trading and sales for the uh, Meridian Trading Desk. Jonathan, have you had a couple uh, busy days or a busy week? Absolutely. It's, uh, it seems like this uh, volatility in the market has come back. Um, it seems like there's been this renewed interest in the market after we got done with the summer. Uh, volume has has spiked up a bit, and uh, and we've been we've been pretty busy down here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, but you, go ahead, Dennis. I was going to ask you, how did this Ebola thing work out there? Were you sensing a lot of fear from some of your clients down there? How, what what are your thoughts here last week, and has that fear subsided now? You know, it's it's kind of been an ongoing process, and I think um, as the headlines have come out, um, you know, clearly starting uh, in Dallas, and uh, you know, I, I think I think we all had the sense that at some point it wasn't going to stop just in, in Dallas; it was going to is going to reach right. out and spread. Um, the, the headlines, the rumors that came through yesterday, clearly we saw a, a pullback in the market uh, when we started. Uh, uh, hearing the rumors of an Ebola, a possible Ebola case in New York, market pulled back about 80 points off the highs and, and rebounded a little bit there. I think it's still kind of too early to um, to gauge the fear on this. I think this is, you know, it's clearly very concerning, um, but I, I don't think there's there's going to be a, a major fear, a major panic, um, major scare to our markets due to something like this. Just because, you know, there's only been four confirmed cases in the United States, New York, um, the hospitals here we know have been fully prepared for the last two or th to three weeks, um, setting up different types of centers and, and going through some, some test procedures as to what would happen in case this did happen. So clearly, um, I, I think this has been a, a best-case scenario at this point, um, having, having the patient in New York being a doctor and, and taking the right precautions and measures himself uh, from the moment that he did not feel well, I think, was, was very important and, and has been a, a calming uh, feeling on the overall tone down here. Okay, Jonathan, uh, you've been on a, a member, or Meridian Group has been a member since 2001. Uh, have you been managing the desk over that entire time? Uh, yes, we actually, uh, it was 2005. We started this firm in 2005, myself and, uh, and, and two partners. Um, I've been managing the, uh, the New York Stock Exchange floor uh, trading and sales operation down here. Um, in addition to that, I've been you know, heavily involved in a lot of the uh, policies and procedures at the exchange, rulemaking, technology, allocations, all, all, different, types of, uh, all different types of committees down here. How, so how much has things changed uh, in the last nine years down there? Uh, things have changed dramatically down here, and, and I think um, I, you know I think I can I can confidently say that that's been with with most industries. Um, you know, technology has played a big part um, in the in the evolution of the of the new trader that's down here. You know, clearly when I started down here, uh, my my first job back in in 1994, everything was done on paper and pad, and and now everything is done on computers. So there's been a, a, a clear evolution that's that's drifted and migrated this way, but that being said, technology has made us such, uh, such efficient traders. The capacity that I have is tremendous. The amount of volume, um, the, the amount of different stocks I can trade at once is tremendous. Um, and, and I think that just trickles down to you know, benefiting my clients and customers and getting them the best price. I think uh, technology has, has helped our markets evolve, sometimes uh, a little too fast. But, uh, but that being said, it's, it's clearly been a tool that has helped our overall markets. So talk about your typical day. I mean, you, I'm sure you get there early. You have responsibility to your clients. Could you just, uh, I mean, I'm sure the morning and before the open and after the open are your busiest parts. Things maybe get a little quieter during the day. Could you just uh, describe a typical day for us, for, uh, for Ab you? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, down here, uh, I'm down here on the floor uh, at about 7 a.m. We've got uh, a total of uh, 
22 employees at Meridian. Uh, not all of them are on the floor. Some are, uh, are on our upstairs trading desk that's off the floor. Uh, in the mornings, we're, we're doing exactly what other, uh, what other broker-dealer um, execution research firms are doing. We're, we're scouring uh, research reports. We're looking at the headlines. On a day like today, we're looking at economic data, earnings reports, stuff that has happened overnight. Um, you know, our clients are hedge funds, mutual funds, pension funds, uh, other broker-dealers, institutions. So we've got a pretty good interest of what their, of what their interest lists are, what their uh, trading strategies are, and what, what we feel would be important for them to see in the morning. So the morning is, is, is kind of recapping yesterday and seeing what's happened overnight and, and doing research and talking to clients uh, and giving them some, some pre-market information of stuff that we see. Once market opens, uh, you know, clearly we hit the ground running. We're trading. Openings are, have, are, are very busy. The price discovery um, method down here is a is a is a unique method, um, and our clients find the value in having uh, having floor brokers as part of their outlets to find liquidity. Throughout the day, we're trading uh, we're trading for our clients um, on a regular basis, whether it's um, whether it's whether it's hedge strategies or whether it's just straight uh, orders throughout the day. And then as we get to the close, once again, the, the close has become a, a very valuable part of the day. Um, pricing for mutual funds occurs then. Uh, pricing for portfolios occurs off the closing price. So, so price discovery has become important on the close. And, and it seems like, you know, volume really, um, you know, we kind of call it the bar look is where there's a lot of volume on the opening and then it kind of gets thin in the middle of the day and then, uh, and then spikes again in the, in the afternoon. So it seems like uh, investors have found times and our clients have found the times when they need us most. We often talk about the closing imbalances and we talk about, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about how that's actually put together? Like when, when you see these imbalances come out and you've got you know, a huge buy imbalance or a huge sell imbalance, uh, how, how is that actually put together on the floor? So the imbalances are, are, are put together through um, the, the market data feeds that read what's on the book at the New York Stock Exchange, right? So you can put in uh, market on close orders, you can put limit on close orders, and as we get closer towards the end of the day, based off of the last sale uh, of where the stock is trading, uh, the data feeds put out information indicating how much volume there is to buy or sell at a certain price. And now what's happened is that... Um, you know, algorithm systems try to triangulate this information to try to figure out where exactly stocks are going to close. But, but one of the misconceptions about this and one of the problems with this and one of the, one of the things that, you know, helps us down here um, is that what we do, what we trade, um, what I can handle for my clients out of hand isn't added into that imbalance feed. So, for example, if you see on your screen um, that the world sees, well, you know, stock is X, Y, Z. There's 150,000 to buy uh, mm -hmm. market on close. If I've got 200,000 for sale and I'm holding that in my hand, you don't see that. You don't know that. Oh. So, the, so the world thinks that the stock is going to close up a dime, 20 cents, 30 cents. In reality, the stock pairs off and will close down. So that's, that's an advantage of, of having a floor broker where I'm able to hold on to what I need to do. Um, and, it, and it also just explains to the outside world that you can't always use um, the, the informational data that you see coming out there because sometimes you're going to find some discrepancies. Okay, we are on the line with Jonathan Corpina. He is a senior managing partner at Meridian Equity Parkers Partners, speaking to us live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange here. Jonathan, got a question coming out of the chat room here, and uh, the question is, is this heightened volatility increased the trading activity, or are people just kind of scared and sitting on hands? Um, you know, there, there's, there's two answers to that. When, um, when the volatility is to the downside, and, and most recently when the volatility is to the, to the downside, we've seen a lot of investors who've been sitting on the sidelines waiting to come into this market step into this market. So portfolio managers have been underperforming the market. Um, we're, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year, and this cash that's, on, that's been sitting on the sideline has to come into the market. So when we've seen this market dip down, um, that's when our clients, I think, are really stepping in and, and adding more capital into this market and adding positions to their portfolio. Contrary to that, when we see the market go straight up, um, 
I think that's when people are sitting on their hands. They, they, they want to wait and see how high this market's going to bounce. They're going to see if it's going to take two steps forward, one step back. And it, it seems like uh, there's a lot more fear and panic when the market's going down as opposed to when the market's going up. It's much easier to wait out an upward trend in the market as opposed to waiting out a, a downward trend in the market. I got a question for you, just uh, changing the topic here a little bit to market structure. And we've seen this migration of volume go from on the exchange to off exchange. A lot of volume now occurs off exchange. What are your thoughts there? Because as more and more volume goes off exchange, I often wonder, especially in some of these smaller stocks, whether the price discovery process is not as valid as it was before when all the volume was on exchange. Right. You know, I find, um, I find that this is a conversation that comes up often with, with many different people in the, in, the, in the industry and outside the industry. Um, the, the New York Stock Exchange has one of the most transparent markets, and, and that's what we value and pride uh, the, the, the trading that occurs down here. When, when there are trades that are occurring in dark markets, um, I, I feel that clients are being put at a, an extreme disadvantage. The rules and regulations aren't as stringent as the exchanges. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's highly unregulated. And, and when you talk about price discovery, when you talk about volume and liquidity, I, I, think, I think the pendulum has swung really too far away from what the value of investing in stocks and companies are. And, and trading in the dark markets are exactly that. It's dark. I, I, and, and you need to feel ha- you know, secure in what you're investing in and how you're trading it. One final question for you here, uh, Jonathan. You're doing all this information, getting the information for your customers. You're talking to floor brokers. You're getting a feel for the orders. Do you pay much attention to technical analysis and the charts, or are you just, you know, they're letting your clients do that. They're giving you the orders. Do you, do you pay much attention to technical analysis? Uh, we pay attention to everything. We have to take everything into, okay. into consideration when figuring out what we're, what we're really looking at, right? Our clients are making the decisions of what they want to buy. Um, we're not advising them on, on, on you know, adding to certain, certain portfolios or, or initiating a position in the stock. They've, they've figured that part out. Our job uh, is to get them the best price and the most liquidity. So I have to take many things into consideration when doing that. Um, if I'm buying a, a stock in the, uh, the automobile sector, I'm, I'm looking at you know, many factors that are associated with that and, and within that sector, comps uh, that are the, how, those, how the comps are trading. Yes, technical levels on a short-term, mid-term, long-term basis uh, of a stock. So, so in fact, all these tools that we have, have to, uh, you really have to use all of them. Okay, Jonathan Corpina, Senior Managing Partner at Meridian Equity Partners, giving us a great perspective on things on the floor. Jonathan, thanks a lot for taking time out of your busy morning, coming on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. like to have you on again for sure. Thank you. Anytime. Really enjoyed it, guys. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Have a good day.